Crossroads Media. This team's going to be the death of me. This team is going to crush my damn soul. Before we discuss this terrible 6 nothing loss, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. And also, please hit that like button as well. Right now, by the way, on my Twitter page at Broads81, I'm giving away a Ben Simmons City Edition jersey. Every Wednesday, I do a new giveaway. You do not want to miss the action. Make sure you go to my Twitter it's pinned to the top of my profile, at Broads81. It explains the rules. Follow me, follow at Broads Media, and retweet the tweet. It's simple. Every Wednesday, I pick the winner. They are DM'd. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. You get a chance to win a jersey. It's a no-brainer. Make sure you are entered to win. All right? All right. Enjoy the show. Wow. All right. This team is just brutal to watch after games like this. Sheesh, as the kids say these days. Not the good sheesh. Okay, not the good sheesh that I see all over TikTok. I'm talking the bad sheesh, as this team just flat out had no life. And once again, it was a joke. I'm watching Alec Bohm play horrendous baseball. What he's doing defensively is embarrassing. And how he's taking this many steps backwards, we're talking about simple easy backhand plays that 1,000 baseball players make in a row. They make it in a row. Backhand, watch the ball, go into your glove. He's waiting for the bounce to happen. He's not pouncing when he needs to. Alec Boehm is a flat-out disgrace defensively. I don't know what the hell is going on with your leader out in right field as well, and I think that he sets the tone. So I'm very disappointed from that angle as well. You're watching these problems come up in the field over and 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 over again. This is what we have seen for the last three years. Nothing has really changed. It's the same problems. Hell, it's the same players as well for the most part. So it's pretty damn brutal that that is what I witnessed. 15 strikeouts. I, I am not buying what Joe Girardi is trying to sell me after the game. That Alcantara is some player that was so damn explosive and so damn lethal that the Phillies lineup sh should be shut down to this level. Where the only sort of offensive production you should get is a late Oduble Herrera hit, a Brad Miller hit, and a Torres hit. Other than that, for the most part, this team did absolutely nothing. You're telling me Alcantara is that solid? And I know that there's one game in his season so far that really makes his numbers jump more than what they should be, right? He got shelled against the Dodgers, and they put up a ton of runs against him, which inflates his numbers. He has not been that bad. I'm acknowledging that. With that being said, though, I'm sorry. You should not be striking out nine times in six innings from Alcantara and a total of 15 times from their entire bullpen, their entire team, package up the starter and the bullpen pieces. It's an embarrassment that that's what they're doing up at the plate. And yeah, there's a problem with how they're doing it right now. They're stepping up and they're just trying to swing through their cleats. Sometimes they need to recognize it's not the time to do that. There's power swing. There's a reason why when we play MLB The Show all day long, there's an A button and a B button. One's a power swing and one's for contact. There's times to swing out of your shoes. There's times to let it rip and sell your soul for maybe a fastball that you're anticipating or an off-speed pitch that you're waiting for. And it's like, hey, I'm going to go full throttle. Plenty of moments for those type of swings. It cannot be every single at-bat, every single player. Something needs to give. And this team just put up... A trash performance at the plate. A trash performance on the mound. A trash performance in the field. So ultimately, when you add up all of those, it's going to be a really bad day at the office. So how about Vince Velasquez? Vince Velasquez was supposed to go, and I can't believe I'm actually going to allow these words to come out of my mouth, but I've actually been a, a bit excited looking forward to seeing what Vince Velasquez was going to provide for us on this next day that he pitched. He's been doing well. He's somewhat been battling and making some noise and making a statement to the franchise and to the fan base that 
my back was against the wall and there's something in me where I'm going to fight, fight and scratch and crawl and I'm going to make sure that I, I seize this moment. I know this is, and I've heard it so many damn times from him. I know time's running out. I know I have limited time. I know I'm not going to get that many more chances. Well, it seemed like it finally resonated in his body and in his mind. So he took control and the last two starts or so, it was actually very strong. I was looking forward to seeing because I know that this Phillies team struggles against the Marlins and they keep winning game one of these series, which is a great start to every three game set. How do you constantly fall when you put yourself at an advantage? You're constantly shooting yourself in the foot. It is an issue. What would Vince Velasquez do to try and stop the bleeding after losing game two? Win the damn series. You're at home. You're facing an opponent that has your number. But even though they have your number, they're not as good as you. Or maybe they are. Maybe they are. But even at 22 and 22, I still look at this Phillies team with all of their issues. And I claim and I admit that I still believe that they are the stronger squad over the Miami Marlins. Now, that's not a high bar. We're not setting the bar insanely at the top here. But still, this Phillies team needs to be able to execute against a garbage Miami Marlins team that is under 500. Yet they can't even do that at Citizens Bank Park. And we were robbed of a Vince Velasquez outing. And I cannot believe I'm allowing those words to actually pour out of my mouth. But there was a bit of me inside that was disappointed. I couldn't watch Vince Velasquez build off of the last few starts that he's had, which has been entertaining, which has been intriguing, which has been solid. Instead, you go to David Hale. And you know what? I'm not even going to give shit to David Hale. He went three innings and allowed one earned run. Based off of the circumstances, now Vinny V has a problem with something on his fingers, and he'll be okay. At the end of the day, this is not going to be anything serious for any of the morons out there that said he should be pitching through this, and he's soft, and I can't believe athletes these days won't play through something on their finger. You're just uneducated. Unfortunately, there are some out there that that thought, who cares, he should fight through it anyway. Once again, you're uneducated, and that matters to a pitcher, the fact that you know there's some numbness going involved and there's some situations going on here with his fingers yeah it's it's game 42 44 I guess of the season let's settle down and not force something to just force something because it's game three against the Miami Marlins in May all right I'm not going to get mad at David Hill he got thrown into the fire he gave you three innings he only allowed one earned run Matt Moore gets absolutely crushed by Cooper. That thing was a bomb. It went 421 feet to that second level over in left field. That was obliterated, absolutely massacred. I I, I just hate Matt Moore. I mean, I hate David Hale too, to be fair. I'm not sitting here saying I don't hate David Hale, but I'm just saying, when you think about what happened, what transpired, hey, you're getting your number called. All right, well, for what it was, it could have been a lot worse. Three innings, one and run. You knew you were going to have a bullpen game once you heard the Vince Velasquez news went down. So, yeah, look, not mad with David Hale. I I guess here's something I'm a little frustrated with. That's Archie Bradley. So, there was a clip that I put up on my social media page, at Broads Media and Broads 81, of course. And it was Archie Bradley in the dugout, very upset with himself where he's throwing his glove. He's really annoyed. He's, He's banging his hand as hard as he can. And I get all the comments afterwards saying, at least he cares. At least it's nice to see someone show some passion out there. Shut up. Shut up. If you watch this 6 to nothing loss and your takeaway is, at least Archie Bradley showed that he was upset. It shows passion and he holds himself accountable. That is one of the most garbage mindsets I've ever heard. I don't care if he's mad at himself. Why, like, to act as if this team isn't mad, or they don't care, or they're not upset, that's irrational. The team's not playing good baseball. They care. Bryce Harper cares. Alec Bohm cares. Gene Segura cares. This team cares that they're not winning when they should be winning. Whether they punch the bench or throw their glove or not, just because you show that, I don't give a damn about showing that. Pitch better. Pitch better. Now, his velocity has dropped 
considering he threw two miles per hour faster in the previous year, which is an issue. And we know he's coming back from an injury, so to anticipate him stepping back in and being full throttle and just being so damn effective right from the jump, that wouldn't be fair, right? You can't justify someone coming back from an injury stint and automatically being some dominating force. But with Archie Bradley, I do not give one damn that he's showing passion and showing that he's not allowing for that to be the uh, the bar for him. Uh, what? What? He sucked. He sucked today. That's what I care about. Not sucking. Not how he reacts in the moment and how he throws his glove. Shut up. You know who showed that they were angry? Joe Girardi and Gene Segura the other night when they faced Toronto. What did that do for you? Absolutely nothing. It did nothing. It was just bad optics. So what does being fired up have to do with anything? Nothing. So I don't care if you show zero emotion. Fix it. That's the only problem here. Is that there's a, there is an issue. Fix the issue. You cannot say a damn word. You cannot show me one facial expression. Fix it. I don't care if you if if you if you scream and yell. I don't care what you say in the press game, post game press conference. I don't care what you do on the field when you're walking back into the dugout. I don't care what you do in the dugout. All I care about is pitching better, hitting better, and just being a better team. You know, I actually heard and saw some comments going with the mentality of Archie Bradley was only doing that because he's so mad at the offense. Do you know anything about sports? There's a 0% chance that Archie Bradley was that disgusted with the offense striking out that he felt the need to act that way. Come on. I cannot believe the way that some individuals' brains actually process information. It's bad. God bless you. God bless some of you out there because it's... Absolutely wild. Five walks by the pitchers for the Phillies pitching staff. The only person who did not record a walk was Ranger Suarez, basically, when the entire game was over. Brad Miller in the ninth inning is getting in the face of the umpire, and he pretty much said, what the fuck is that with the call that was a strike? So now they can't even really see a strike. I mean, it was a basic strike, so they can't even get a sense of the strike zone, and they're just letting all their boiled frustration bottle up inside and, and let it rip after the game. So I believe the quote was, oh, it was, are you fucking kidding me? As he just went into the face of the umpire, uh, Brad, excuse me, sir. I don't know if you were aware of this, but that pitch was perfect. That pitch was at the top of the strike zone and it was a strike. So why don't you bitch and complain when bitching and complaining is more warranted, not so much when the pitch was executed the right way. 15 total Ks, as I mentioned. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Alec Bohm sucks defensively. Horrible, horrible, horrible. He went 0 for 4, three strikeouts swinging, and he's hitting 218. There's an adjustment here, okay? The players on the other side have now seen Alec Bohm. We talk about studying pitchers' tendencies throughout an outing and throughout a playoff series and throughout a season and just throughout experience in playing the same pitchers in your division, getting a sense for what they throw, what they like to do in an 0-2 count, what they like to do in a 2-2 count, what they like to do in a 1-2 count, in a 2-0, and whatever, you know? You know what a, a specific pitcher likes to do. Well, when Alec Bohm came into the league last year, no one had a true sense of what Alec Bohm was going to be. He came out, it was a splash, it was fun. When he came to runners in scoring position, he delivered. It didn't matter how many strikes were on him. He would put the barrel on the ball, and it was nice. Teams make adjustments. Opposing teams recognize things. You can see that, well, the other team might have something on Alec Boom now on top of him just being in his own head too. But teams make adjustments. Pitchers figure you out just like you figure out pitchers. There's a correlation between... Alec Boehm having a, a year last year. It wasn't a full season, but it was enough for pitchers to realize what he likes to do, how he hits, where his weak spots are. Let's go back to MLB The Show. There's a reason why when you look at your strike zone with certain hitters, some areas are red, some areas are blue. All right? Because you're not as great of a hitter in some spots of that strike zone. And I think Alec Boehm is just thrown in for a loop at the moment, and he's got to dig himself out of it. 
it's affecting him defensively, unfortunately, but he also just blows defensively as well. You could live with these errors if he was hitting 300, if he was hitting 312, if he was hitting 298. He's hitting 218, and he's striking out three times swinging. He is a mess at the plate. I think he's trying to do way too much, and he's overthinking. But what you're getting defensively, I mean, that has to be cleaned up. It has to be figured out. He's never going to be a shut-down, hot-corner third baseman. It's inevitable, all right? You're never going to see Nolan Arenado-type defensive plays out of Alec Boehm. But what you're getting is Reese Hoskins out in left field territory. What you're getting is almost un- playable defensively. You're just allowing the other team to score. You're allowing the other team to get runs. We watched it happen in the sixth inning in game two of this series where Duvall ended up smacking that ball that hit off of his glove when the infield was in. When Rojas started off the sixth inning with a leadoff double that went right underneath of his glove. These are simple standard plays that players make blindfolded in Major League Baseball, yet he can't find a way to make simple backhanded plays and He's, he's just not judging the hop properly. He's, he's not recognizing when he should push forward and play it off of the first hop or let the second hop hit. And when the second hop does hit, his glove's 10 feet too high. The ball goes underneath. Alec Boehm is a problem, and he is a reason why this team is failing because guess what? The extended innings are occurring. Guys are getting on base. Now the next batter's going. Now your starting pitcher has to throw 15 more pitches in that inning because you couldn't get the original out to record that first or second out. Now it keeps rolling. Now they got three more batters up and now that impacts Zach Eflin or it impacts whoever. Tonight, a little different story and now you have, just because of the pitching of course, it was just so wonky for, for your staff, uh, but now you got the Red Sox coming to town. Unfortunately you don't get Nick Pavetta. That would have been fun although maybe it wouldn't have been because he probably Probably would have somehow landed double-digit strikeouts in Citizens Bank Park. That would have been a miserable watch to see. But this was miserable as well. Something that's not miserable? Playoff time. Big stakes, bigger promotions. It's time to hammer the over and score some cash. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving you a chance to lower the over-under on a featured playoff game. All players who place a bet on the featured basketball game will have a hand in lowering the over-under on the game. That's right. For every 1,500 players who bet the over on the select game, the over-under will drop by one point. Every better who hammers the over in the featured game helps to lower the game's over-under. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code BROADS when you sign up to hammer the over. For every 1,500 people that bet on the over in the featured game, the line will decrease by one point. Yes, this is your chance to improve the odds. So tell your friends and family this is a team effort. Hammer the over and improve your odds of doubling your money. That's code BROADS for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only. Restrictions apply. Max $25 wager. One per customer. Offer ends May 23rd in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, let's go on, go on over to the Anytime Hotline here. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm so upset that that's the product we saw today on the field. Okay, here we go. Okay, Broods, uh, I'm in the ballpark right now. Game just ended. Stayed for all nine innings. That was one of the most lifeless, most boring, and most unentertaining baseball games I have ever witnessed from a Philly fan's perspective. That was honestly embarrassing. And still can't beat the Marlins. And this friend needs to, needs to change immediately. And it's just dead in here right now. Like, and the team was the main reason why. <laughs> I love the fact that we're getting phone calls now from Citizens Bank Park. I actually got a text message from my cousin. And I'm looking up some stats here because I saw a bunch of stuff floating around the Twitter sphere after the game in regards to the Phillies matchup against the Marlins and the discomfort that we've been witnessing over the last handful of years. But yeah, my my cousin sent me a picture from the stands and just said, help me, help me with a couple of different gifts showing his pain. And I said, I got nothing for you, man. I feel the same way. I'm just happy I didn't spend the money like you did to go down to the ballpark on the tickets, on the food involved, on the parking. And look, a good, a bad day at the ballpark, it's like fishing, right? What do they say? A bad day of fishing beats a 
good day of anything else. And ironically enough, I don't know why that randomly popped up today. That phrase came out of my mouth today. I went fishing today. It was nice. I had a couple bites. Never got able to reel one in. I was a little disappointed. Went to the same spot a few weeks ago. Caught a couple catfish. So I thought, hey, maybe I'd get another two catfish or so. Wasn't able to. It was a good day at the office. Where was I going with that? I have no idea. I think my point was going to the ballpark is still better than not going to the ballpark. It is a little disappointing, though, when you get no action. You really had nothing on base. Brad Miller on second base. Oduble continues his streak of getting hits. Torres. But other than that, I mean, they didn't even give you a little bit of anything. So you think about the money spent on a night like this. Unfortunately, though, that happens. Now, going to the Miami Marlins here. We have, I'm trying to see here, since the start of the 2019 season, the Marlins are 19 and 13 versus the Phillies and 89 and 144 versus everybody else. That's a 593 win percentage against the Phillies. So basically almost a 600 win percentage against the, the Phillies, while a 382 win percentage against every other team. Every squad has their version of the kryptonite, right? Every team has their issues and that. that that one team that just has their number. And for the most part, there's te- times where that squad happens to be a team that is not on your level. And you just have that mental block every time you face them. Enough's enough, though. Enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of it. This Marlins team is not good enough to wax your ass basically every single time you play. And something has to change. I do enjoy, though, the phone call from the ballpark. I kind of put a smile on my face, you know? I don't know why. It was a bad game, but I'd like to call from the ballpark, so thank you. Ah, bro, it's what I would have given to see your face when the Phillies announcers announced that David Hale was starting because of Vince Velasquez's finger. That must have been quite the reaction you had out of that. Uh, We'll see how it goes. He First pitch, he gets destroyed. Second pit or second batter, he gets a double play, but it's hit over 100 miles per hour. So this should be a shit show. <laughs> I guess that call was kind of how it how it played out when it when it or called in when it was playing out basically in that first inning. Yeah, I mean, I guess because there's really not that much to go down the list on with, with this team with this team and this game. We pretty much hit it already. Going back to Twitter, you know, I had sushi tonight. I guess this is not just a breakdown in a Phillies recap video. It's what the hell did Broads do today? So you kind of knew my day. I went fishing. I recorded open ice hits. I had coffee with Broads. Then I went fishing. If we're going chronological order, I came home. I had sushi right before watching this game. And I said, what's better than Vince Velasquez on the bump? Okay, it's Sushi and Vince Velasquez on the bump. And then within moments of tweeting that out, bomb, bomb dropped on me. That now, I saw from Jim Salisbury of NBC Sports Philadelphia, now I got to go watch David Hale. But as I alluded to earlier, with that being said, the David Hale experience today, it could have been a lot worse. Three innings, one hit. How about the fact that, or one earned run, I should say. How about the fact that Zach Wheeler gets up to bat? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We're watching Zach Wheeler go up to to pinch hit for you. That is unbelievable. This team drives me crazy. I don't get it. I don't get how you can be this bad at the plate. You are too good on paper, at least. Like, I think this roster is too good to be striking out 15 times. And it happens, okay? It happens. You do have games where you just don't see it that night. But every game, we have a common theme here. Joe Girardi saying something about the opposing pitcher having his stuff tonight, being amazing tonight. And I don't expect Joe Girardi to just call out his entire team and say, you know what, our team sucks Hey, everyone in the media and all the Phillies fans out there, our team sucks. So take it for what it is. Our team just stinks. That's your answer. That's why we couldn't hit the ball tonight. He's going to praise the opposing pitcher. He's going to say his off-speed pitches were there. He's going to mention a changeup. He's going to mention a slider. He's going to talk about fastball command. He's going to talk about it all. He's going to talk about the great sequences and all of it. And the putting away power and putting away guys with that special pitch for the third strike. He's going to talk about all that because that's what the manager is is just going to do. It's obvious that's the message we are going to hear. 
But when we hear it every game, like, whew. All right. Alcantara. Whew. All right. Patrick Corbin, who sucked leading up to that game. Whew. All right. John Lester. Whew. All right. Steven Matz. Whew. All right. Some Joe Schmo I never even heard of on the Blue Jays. Whew. All right. You know, like the list goes on and on. It's every damn time. At what point can we please just recognize that this something needs to change at the plate? Stop trying to swing out of your damn shoes. You're having a strikeout problem. And the numbers are up all around the league. There's no denying it. But it, it's happening more so with the Phillies. Let me get you these numbers, all right? Because I saw Bob Wankel of Crossing Broad tweet out the strikeout rate for the Phillies this year. And it's brutal. They end the night with a 27.5 strikeout rate today with 15 strikeouts. They have struck out 13. Uh, this was, excuse me, that first line was previously. He quote tweeted himself. They entered the night with the National League worst 27.2 strikeout percentage. And it's actually going to go up after tonight's performance. It, it, it's just crazy. Fuck. That shit. Fuck is this team doing? Joe Dillon. What? I I don't even know what to say at this point. I mean, I really have nothing. It's just I just need a TL. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Well, guess what? If that's what the Anytime Hotline is for, then by all means, you know, I'm here for the people. I'm a man of the people. If you need to get out your frustration, that's why the phone number is available at 856-442-9805. I need to allow you to have that outlet. I'm here to give you that opportunity to release your stress. And when you see this team playing 500 ball, you know, everyone always asks me, Broach, what's wrong with this team? What do you see in this team? This is what they've been. This is what they've been for a handful of years. And I, I don't know. Like, this is who they are. This is the Philly. So you're either going to ride with this obnoxiousness and you're going to go through these absurd ups and downs or you're going to be out. But to expect anything to truly change, I think that that's just not being realistic with what we have here. You need to somewhat dwindle back your expectations or recognize what is the reality with this team. They are a team that is going to be 500 and then eventually, hopefully, just have four or five games over 500 at some point throughout the 162. This is nothing new. This is literally nothing new. This has been your Philadelphia Phillies for the last handful of seasons. And I don't know what you changed. You mentioned Joe Dillon. Yeah, I mean, the, the mentality at the plate right now is bad. It's bad around the entire league, but it's bad with these strikeout numbers as a whole. And some of these pitchers are hittable. To act as if all these pitchers are just so perfect that it's no problem that the Phillies are, are doing this. No, they're not going up against Clayton Kershaw, Jacob DeGrom, Max Scherzer, and... Steven Strasburg of two years ago when he went on that crazy run with the Washington Nationals and helped them win a World Series. You're not doing that. These pitches are hittable. There are things left over the plate that you should be able to murder and you should be able to put over the fence or you should be able to put in play. Screw over the fence. Maybe that's a bad statement to make. It doesn't always need to be over the fence, but that you can put in play, that you can knock for a single, that you can put out in the outfield, that can go into the gap, that you can just drive smoothly and take advantage of a bad pitch they don't even take advantage of the bad pitches properly so what what is going on here with what they're teaching this team i don't know what's up bro it's on here after the penalty is six to zero to the marlins man i'm serious bro i feel like i, I might want to watch a girls softball team it more than the phillies offense man it's just like bad hey to be fair real quick before we continue the call man i, I watched uh, don't be knocking them softball players, dude. You watch some of that stuff that's on ESPN, and you're watching Florida and Alabama and, and some of these things. Those, those girls could play. Those girls could play. So I don't know if you're saying that. In the, I mean, it clearly was in a way looking at it negative, like, oh, I'd rather watch women than my team. Hey, give them credit. They ball. They ball. All right, continue. Things are really bad right now, how they're swinging. And, like, they're swinging out pitches way out of the zone. Like, like, it's just terrible. I mean, I think, uh, what his name is, Alcantara, I mean, 
he's a good pitcher, but I don't think he was that good to break the plays off like that. And Vince Velasquez, he got scratched. So that was hard for David Hale. Not more than not do a good job at all. Archie Brown did struggle. And it only does a bad day with the Phillies in the, in the whole day. You know, it's funny you bring up Archie Bradley. So let's state this back now. It's funny how this can all somewhat be laid out perfectly. So going back to two days ago when Jose Alvarado, and I know we talked about this before, but I'm just showing you this timeline here. When Jose Alvarado was in the game and he allowed the two-run homer to Jazz late in action to make the score 3-1, the Phillies went down. Why didn't you bring in Kinsler? Why didn't you bring in Coonrod? Why wouldn't you bring in Archie Bradley? Well... I didn't think he made a wrong decision by making Alvarado the guy, even though it didn't work out. Then the next night, Kinsler didn't work. But you mentioned what in Kinsler the day before, but he didn't work. Now you bring in Archie Bradley. He didn't work. But you mentioned two games ago, why not Archie Bradley instead of Jose Alvarado? You see my point? Every every person that this individual comments at me all the time is like, well, why didn't Joe put in this guy? Why didn't Joe put in that guy? Just because it didn't work, it doesn't mean that the mentality was wrong on who you selected. All the guys that you specifically, and I'm talking to the commenter who mentioned this before, who like every guy that you mentioned that should have went in instead of Jose Alvarado since that comment has failed miserably with their attempt on the bump. Do you see my point here with the 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 outrage towards the manager? Relax. It's on the guys to actually step in and produce, and they are not doing that on top of not getting good defense, on top of not getting good hitting as well. Good luck. Good luck winning baseball games. And now you got a really strong team in Boston coming into South Philadelphia. So have at it what you will. Before we head out of here, Orbit Energy and Power, okay? They are the best. They are the best when it comes to solar. They are home to your solar experts. They're located in Mantua, New Jersey. They can provide solar energy for your home, water purification systems for clean, healthy water for your family, backup energy services, battery storage, tree removals, electrical upgrades, you name it, they can do it for your home, and they do it best in class. We're talking about $0 electric electric bills, by the way. What they do is they sit you down, and they will educate you on how going solar is extremely beneficial for your family. It is a must listen situation. So check out their information. OrbitEnergy.us is their website. Their phone number is down below in the description. Orbit Energy and Power. Home of your solar experts. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you next time.